So we're in Barcelona for MWC25. I'm here with Laurent Leboucher. He's Group CTO and Senior VP of Orange Innovation Networks. Laurent, thanks very much for joining us today. Could you just update us on uh, Orange's efforts to enable network automation? Thank you, Ray. Thank you for having me and uh, in this uh, crazy and exciting week. This is a, a very uh, strategic uh, journey for uh, Orange. Uh, we have uh, started to implement uh, AI uh, in different parts of the operations, uh, from uh, field operations uh, to uh, improve the uh, energy efficiency of our radio networks, uh, also to uh, avoid um, truck rolls uh, on, on field ops, to uh, improve the uh, efficiency of uh, network engineers uh, on the network operating center to find the uh, the root cause analysis of problems uh, very quickly and so on. So we are doing that in uh, our different uh, geographies and uh, we are working and bringing all these uh, uh, use cases together in order to be able to replicate them uh, as quickly as possible. Now, this is something that uh, Orange has been working on for a long time and studying all the different potential and partnerships. Um, and just recently, Orange announced a, a partnership with Mistral AI. Can you tell us a little bit more about that relationship and what that is going to bring to Orange? So we have a partnership with Mistral. Uh, we will have the opportunity to leverage uh, their model, uh, Le Chat, uh, in our uh, uh, professional and enterprise uh, uh, offers. But at the same time, uh, in the same partnership, uh, we will work very closely uh, with uh, Mistral uh, from an R&D standpoint to uh, leverage what they're doing in order to help us uh, in our own operations. And especially on the network side, uh, we will work on, on two different streams. One is AI for network, and the other one is uh, network for AI in a way to uh, improve also the uh, new AI multimodal capabilities uh, with the network. Right, because that's a really important consideration, isn't it? I mean, you are using AI in lots of different ways, but your customers are going to be using more and more AI applications and tools. And eventually with multimodal AI, that's probably going to have an impact on the way your networks are used and how you have to plan them. Is that right? Definitely, definitely. And uh, we strongly believe that uh, we need to prepare ourselves and our network in order to cope with the new use cases. The usage of AI is exploding today. And it, if you think of generative AI, it's no longer just text-based. Now it's become, as you say, multimodal. It means that uh, video uh, will also become very important. And it's not downstream video, it's uplink. And we need to, to prepare the network for the capacity to do the uplink and also to provide the, the good quality of service. And this is exactly what we are demonstrating in our one of our uh, booths here, one of our stand here, we are demonstrating how we can use uh, slicing, dynamic slicing, during the time of a conversation, a video conversation. So the use case is for a technician on the field, but there are many uh, different applications. We, we strongly believe that the network could help uh, the new AI. Now, Orange is also at the heart of the network API action. Uh, where are you in terms of exposing your network capabilities to application developers? So, first of all, it has become real. Now we have uh, commercial availability of uh, our uh, APIs, camera APIs. We started with uh, uh, two markets, uh, France and Spain, and uh, we have uh, uh, created a business unit called Orange LiveNet. Uh, and this uh, business unit is uh, now delivering those uh, API. We start with uh, easy uh, APIs and we expect uh, also to introduce some uh, more advanced APIs that will leverage the core of our uh, 5G uh, uh, network, 5G SA network in those markets, Spain and France, and also extending to the other European countries. Okay. Like you said, it's really happening and it's uh, exciting times to watch that happen and, and, and move on so quickly. Now, something else that uh, Orange has been working on for quite some time is its Open RAN strategy. Can you just give us a quick update on where you are with Open RAN? So, uh, we have, uh, uh, as you probably know, we have started to uh, 
deploy at very small scale up and run. We've started in Romania uh, in a run sharing agreement uh, that we have with uh, Vodafone. And we, are, uh, we will have this year and, and, and next year the opportunity to, ex to extend uh, still at small scale in different areas, starting with rural, but also to some cities, uh, small scale first. And we will prepare a uh, wider scale that will uh, start in 2027. And for that, we will need to uh, source, I mean, solutions. And uh, this is something that we will uh, prepare this year, but the sourcing will happen next year. Okay. And I guess, you know, the longer we go on as well, the, the maturity of the capabilities and the technologies out there and the models, I guess, uh, are all much more advanced. Finally, there is talk here and quite serious talk about how 6G is going to start to impact the, the industry, important discussions upcoming in South Korea. Well, what is Orange's strategy for 6G? First of all, uh, 6G has not been standardized yet. So it's difficult to define the strategy for 6G if it doesn't exist. Um, but 2025 is a very important year because uh, 3GPP starts uh, the studies uh, in order to prepare those standards. And we expect that uh, we will have uh, iterations in order to define a, a release 20 and so on uh, that will happen in uh, 2020, end of 2029, 20, uh, 2030. So the way we see it is that up to now, we used to think of the evolution of mobile network as big generation, each time with a completely new different network. Today, we believe that uh, a lot of features which are meaningful for our customers will come from software evolutions. So we need to have a way to uh, market and uh, explain uh, uh, those features to our customers. At the same time, we will have some hardware uh, evolutions that will happen less frequently. Right. Uh, so we, we need to work on the two axes, the hardware axis, but also more importantly, the software uh, access where we will bring continuous uh, innovation and we would like to make sure that there is a large ecosystem uh, working together and this is really what, what matters now is really to uh, create that uh, ecosystem leveraging what we are doing today already with 5G Well let's hope we start to see the evolution of that 6G ecosystem with the upcoming uh, meetings and the 3G PP work Laurent, thanks very much for taking time to talk to us. Really appreciate it. And good luck with the rest of MWC 25. Very welcome. Right.